everybody welcome to my channel it is your girl Jan and if it is your first time here or if you haven't already please do subscribe for more lifestyle videos and vlogs as well as advice and to keep up with my journey throughout medical school but if this is not your first time on my channel and you are returning for yet another dose of my videos first of all welcome back i appreciate you and you will know that this is part two um, of the instagram q a where i put a poll and asked you guys to send me in questions to do with med school part one of this video was focusing mainly on applications everything you need to be doing to have a successful application into med school and um, this is part two where I've decided to put most of the rest of the general questions that you guys asked me because I didn't want to leave them out I also didn't want to make like one one hour long video because who's gonna sit around to watch that um I mean I probably wouldn't if I was you so, so I'm gonna stop waffling now and get into these questions because I know that's what you came for okay question one actually two people asked the same kind of question Sandy hey girl asked have you always wanted to be a doctor since you were little then anna also asked when did your dream of becoming a doctor start have i always wanted to be a doctor no not quite so when i was like very young um i wanted to be a teacher then as we do as kids i changed my mind and i decided i wanted to be a bus driver and then um i went through a period of time like in my early teens when i didn't really know what i wanted to do then by the time i got to like 15 16 um and i realized that sciences were my favorite subjects and i hated every other subject pretty much except from french that realization combined with a lot of prayer and other spiritual guidance i realized that medicine was actually for me and that's when i decided to start getting into doing things that were going to build my application like work experience volunteering and all the other things that i mentioned in part one of this video question two somebody asked what exactly are you specializing into a lot of people assume that in med school like you specialize in something in particular but you don't so at this stage i am on five week rotations around every single speciality in medicine that you can imagine so cardiology gynecology that i'm on now my next placement is going to be pediatrics then i'm going to do neurology psychiatry everything i'm doing everything at the moment but um what i want to go into personally when i do get to the stage of specialization is pediatric surgery and i say surgery in particular because being a medical pediatrician and a pediatric surgeon is two completely different pathways in terms of like training and specialization and apparently pediatric surgery is the more competitive one but that's what i want to do so i always did put myself up for a challenge i've never had a job that doesn't involve children or working with children somehow and that is where my passion is i just love children they are bundles of joy and i'm so passionate about them being our future and i believe it is part of my purpose and calling to facilitate them to be great so yeah i want to be a pediatric surgeon next question somebody asked isn't med school hectic <sighs> darling yes yes it really is and you know what most of the time i am stressed out of my mind but i stay smiling and i keep my head up because i must keep moving i cannot come and kill myself for any of this thing that i'm doing that's why recently you guys probably haven't seen me being very active on social media one more year every single day in fact this is my motivation right now one more year i don't know why i'm singing one more year as if after med school things are still not going to be hectic because the life of a junior doctor in fact is even more demanding than the life of a medical student from the moment you enter med school like this even when you come out of med school and you become a doctor and you're working it it's a hectic career and i can't even say this life chose me because i chose it with my chest so if you're in med school already and you can relate just hang in there we're gonna be all right and if you're interested in getting into med school brace yourself next question <laughs> next question <laughs> this was a very popular question five of you asked me the same question let me see if i can find it here hi i would like to ask how you are able to balance medicine and your social life i'm in my first year but how do you manage to balance your study time even during this time how do you balance school and your regular life 
and there was a couple more you guys all want to know this major big question how do you balance i can see why so many of you have asked this question it is a very good question it's a question i'm also still asking myself how do you balance because the truth is balance doesn't exist this is something that i speak about in my video that you can find on the link here there are some people out there who totally cut off their social life and all they focus on is uni and studying and books unfortunately i am not one of those people i love to have my hands like dipped in so many things and like keeping so busy i don't know why i do it to myself but i do and how do i balance um like i said there's no such thing as the perfect balance i'm never perfectly balanced with everything that i have going on like even right now i feel like i have been focusing a lot on like youtube and other aspects of my life and i feel a bit behind on like where i would like to be in terms of like my revision schedule i'm sitting here filming this video if you guys <laughs> smiling like this but in the back of my mind this is stressed this is stressed but you know what it's about timely prioritization it's possible to get everything done but you have to do things at the right time so for example if i started now prioritizing youtube in exam season things wouldn't end very well but if i prioritize youtube now so that by the time it comes to exam season i've given youtube some time and it's time to give my academics some time and then once exams are done you're prioritizing something else and you've still got to do other things with your life you've got to see your friends you've got to be happy you know being perfectly honest with you guys in terms of like prioritizing and trying to achieve that balance which doesn't exist half the time i feel like i'm doing it all wrong i feel like maybe i'm focusing on the wrong things but then what gives me peace is when i pray and i remember that everything i'm doing is according to god's will and as much as i may feel like lost he has a plan for me and everything i'm focusing on and putting my time into will work out because it's all according to his plan for my life next question what is the process of being in medical school so i take it that this question means that from the beginning of med school from when you enter to when you graduate what is the process like this is a really good question because actually different universities have different course structures um i can only speak for my uni because i haven't looked too tough into what other universities do where i go the first two years are what they call your pre-clinical years you don't really um, have much patient contact or go and placement much it's lectures upon lectures upon lectures upon lectures upon lectures and those two years are the most common times for people to drop out of med school because they realize ah, this is a lot of reading the first two years of med school is a lot it's very full-on year three is what they call the transition year so they're transitioning you from pre-clinical to your clinical years that year half the time you're in placement and half the time you're in lectures so it's like they're very kindly introducing to you what it's like um, being in hospital um, and seeing patients and applying everything that you have learned from two whole years of lectures into the clinical environment and treating those patients year four which is the year i'm in now is when they chuck you in the deep end there's no more lectures really by the way year four in my uni is 13 months i started in june 2020 and i'm not going to finish till july 2021 it's the longest year and they say the hardest year too they chuck you in the deep end when you go to placement doctors are expecting a lot more of you now because you've spent four years in med school so they will send you off to what we call clerk your own patients um, and to come up with management plans and diagnoses but of course you have to run it by the doctor and they have to agree that this is the best thing to do then by the time you get to fifth year which is your final year you're essentially as skilled as a junior doctor and you will spend final year mainly shadowing junior doctors and helping them with most of the jobs that they do but within that year as well is when you will be submitting your applications for your first job as a doctor a junior doctor so that by the time you finish with med school like this um, then they put you straight in the job we had somebody who asked hey Jan how many years does it take becoming a doctor in the UK it's more years in the US yeah I do think it's more years in the US because you can't um, go straight into medical school can you you've got to do like a whole pre-med degree then do medical school you then. definitely know that whole process better than I do however here in the UK it depends if you go straight into medical school then you can do five or six years of medical school most people do six so I'm actually in year five out of six um, so once you've done those six years 
then you go into foundation training or what in america i think you call residency and once you've done those two years that will be in general you'll rotate around different parts of medicine and once you've completed that and you've got two foundation years in your bag then that's when you can choose a speciality training pathway so for example if you want to go into neurosurgery or general surgery or if you want to be a gp that's the point you'll specialize in that each speciality training pathway has a length of its own i think some of the longest are pediatric surgery neurosurgery and being an obstetrician slash gynecologist i think that one is seven years um the other two i mentioned are eight years and that's just from the point of post foundation training so you've done six years in med school two years foundation and you another eight years to specialize to become a consultant and some of the shortest pathways um are gp which is just three years of speciality training. So in America, that's what you guys would call internal medicine. Another short one I think is psychiatry. Don't quote me on that. And somebody wanted to know, hi, I would like to know about the workload over the years. As I said previously, like from day one, it's hefty. It's hefty because it's lectures upon lectures upon lectures upon lectures. But the only good thing about the lectures in semester one is that most of the content is the same as A-level content, essentially. Then semester two is when things start getting new and a bit sticky. I would say the more you progress through med school, though, the more confident you become in your knowledge and the more confident you become in your skills as well from being on placement. Because we study by what's called a spiral curriculum, so they keep revisiting things again and again. So things start to get in ingrained in your brain however the thing that does make the workload um more hefty in the later years of med school is that they do expect you to be doing things outside of medical school so creating research papers um doing audits presenting at conferences all of this to add on to your cv and to make you more competitive when it comes to applying for the junior doctor job it's very busy but it's manageable just about i mean look at me i'm surviving just about <laughs> this question is from my cousin ruth i feel like she sent me some really like outside the box questions and i love that what is one thing you weren't warned about prior to med school the one thing that i probably wasn't warned about but which is real you guys is imposter syndrome so prior to applying i thought that yeah when i get in it's gonna be great i'm gonna feel great because i'm finally doing what i always wanted to do and yada 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 but when i got in especially when they started uh sending me uh onto placements and things like this i just felt like i wasn't supposed to be there you know when you feel like you're not worthy to be in a place you have a certain title but you don't feel like you're worthy to have it till this day i get it sometimes i look around me at like my fellow medical students and then get intimidated sometimes i'm like what these people are smart smart <laughs> what am i doing here again so that's really real and it used to get me down quite a lot because i just used to like put myself down however i think it was like last month or so i listened to a podcast um by patrice washington she's amazing where she talks about imposter syndrome she herself is a very successful um black woman in america and she was talking about how most if not every successful woman experiences imposter syndrome and she mentioned that even michelle obama talks about having experienced imposter syndrome where you just don't feel good enough for the position that you've been placed in or for the title that you've been given when really you are more than qualified you are more than deserving and this is something that i have had to learn and in fact that i am still learning if you were out there and you needed to hear that i will link the podcast episode down below one thing i learned from that episode is that the way to sort of deal with imposter syndrome because it's all in the mind what you need to do is to combat those thoughts with opposite thoughts you mind yourself listen i have achieved the grades i have this quality and this quality and this quality all the evidence is there i am more than deserving to be in this position so that's something i'm actually still learning at the moment too how do you manage student finance well well <laughs> not enough people talk about this i feel like as students and especially as medical students the struggle is real you guys i was even biting my tongue as to whether i really wanted to answer this question or not but i thought you know what let me keep it real and the reality is the struggle is real like it's very hard to work um 
a job be that part-time or not alongside medical school personal opinion so without having any form of constant income you find yourself having to rely on student finance a lot of the time student finance is not very generous with how much they give you a lot of the time i find myself living that broke student life and it's real but i have to remind myself that this is temporary I have had to significantly increase my financial literacy so i'm not doing things like messing up my credit score all while i'm trying to survive this long six years of broke student life thankfully though i do have two loving parents shout out mr and mrs mochibi who are there for me and who do really help me out when i am like really stuck and i need it Chantel asked hey could you also do a segment on the most important topics to master while in med school and i'm gonna group that with another question where somebody said how does mathematics come in handy in med school because it's not my strongest point i'm not gonna lie sis same me and maths is a no from me only god knows how i achieved an a star in maths gcse but after that i said never again and even today when i do maths it, it gets all long it gets all long but uh, mathematics is not too 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 important when it comes to med school the only times where you really have to apply it is in pharmacology so where you are prescribing drugs and you need to calculate drug doses of course you do not want to overdose your patients and you want to you know give them enough of a dose of a medication but aside from that right now i can't think of any other major uses for maths and calculations in the medicine degree um, in response to what are the important topics to master in medical school what you want to know really is anatomy that's quite important anatomy of the human body and then something that we call pathophysiology so i think a good approach in medicine is learning about the body system by system so respiratory system cardiovascular system uh, musculoskeletal system reproductive system all of that and learning about the pathophysiology so ways in which the different parts of that system can go wrong anatomy pathophysiology of each different body system and pharmacology is also important too and by pharmacology i mean like prescribing and medication and things like that okay we got our final question in the mix what is the most life-changing experience you have had in the last five years i would say uh personally it's probably the whole application process because like being rejected twice in a row from like five different medical schools it's very character building let me tell you that after having gone through that i definitely see what i'm doing a lot differently i don't take it for granted at all uh, which i probably might have done had i not faced so much rejection and trials to get in um but yeah i've chosen that as the most life-changing experience that i've been through because it's changed it's changed the way that i view what i'm doing and that brings us to the end of the video guys if you have stayed all the way until the end i know i can ramble on so thank you so much i do hope you've enjoyed it though and i hope there's been something you've been able to take out of it and thank you so much to everybody who sent in a question you guys are the real mvps don't forget to follow me on instagram if you don't already and please do not forget to subscribe to this channel hit the bell notification for more updates on how my med school experience is going how life is going i appreciate you always and i'll see you in my next video Mwah.